Hi seniors, this is a video to talk about setting up financial aid portals and IDOC in order to submit important financial paperwork to the financial aid offices of the schools you're applying to. If you're watching this video, it is because you have already accomplished some of these important steps. So stage one is already completed, done. Stage two is also already completed, beautiful. Stage three means that you've actually submitted your CSS profile and your FAFSA, and that is done. And so we are here in stage four of what's called the verification process. More specifically, we are setting up financial aid portals for schools. So to help with the visual for this, in this scenario, you, your fabulous senior, are right here. You have in your possession a copy of your W-2 from your job, your mom's W-2, your mom's 1040. Again, these are examples. It could be dad, it could be guardians. Some of these documents may not apply. This is an example. So in this scenario, you have documents and your colleges are going to want a copy of those documents. So this is their financial aid office. That's what this picture is. And we need to figure out what is the correct way to get the documents to your financial aid office so they can verify your information and give you a financial aid award. If you submitted the CSS profile, you have three potential routes that the schools could ask you for how the schools could ask you to submit documents. I'm going to go through these options. Again, these are for people who did the CSS profile in addition to the FAFSA. Option one is that the schools will use a service called IDOC that you access through College Board, and they want you to upload your documents into IDOC, and then they will go into IDOC and retrieve the documents. Option two, again, only relevant for schools that use the CSS profile, is they may ask for some documents by IDOC, but then some documents through their own specific portal or website. So in this case, you would need to do both. You would submit certain documents to one, certain documents to the other. They would tell you which ones where and then the school would be able to receive them that way. The third option is for those of us who use the FAFSA, definitely, and then for some schools with a CSS profile. And in this case, the schools actually don't participate or don't use IDOC, so they want you to just upload the documents into their portal, and then they'll retrieve them that way. There is no way for us as your counselors to tell exactly how each school does it. It changes from year to year, but it is going to be, documents are going to be requested in one of these three ways. And it is your job to figure out for each school, which one of those three ways. But headline here is you have some documents, you gotta get them to your school's financial aid office, and you have to figure out which of the three ways you're going to do that. Okay, so now you're ready to check IDOC or set up IDOC. You're gonna to go to collegeboard.org. You're going to sign in. <clears throat> you're logged into College Board at this point. You're gonna use the drop down menu, click CSS profile. Click sign in one more time. Very normal for it to ask for your password one more time. All right, so now you're logged into your CSS profile. You should see this purple box that shows a submitted date. If you have not yet submitted your CSS profile, you will not be able to access IDOC. So again, you access IDOC, after you have completed stage three and you've moved into stage four for verification. So this is the landing page for CSS profile. Here you can see the colleges it was submitted to. And then in this next steps part, you would click here to access the IDOC dashboard. When you get logged in, 
it will show you your name. It will show you the colleges that you submitted the CSS profile to and that use IDOC. So that this may not be every college you applied to. These are just colleges that use CSS profile and IDOC. Gives you an institution code, the name of the school, and a deadline. Then this next section is required documents. So you will see the name of the document. You will see whose document they are asking for. So in this scenario, they're asking for a custodial parent tax return. And then you will see which schools are requesting it. And if you hover over the code, you can see the actual name of the school. There will be a link to upload your documents. And then down below, you will be able to see what has been uploaded, but not yet processed. And then what has actually been processed. So the goal is that anything listed here would be visible in the uploaded. Once it's been processed, it then would be visible in the processed documents. So if you have done this, that means that you have uploaded all of the documents that they asked for. All of them have been processed. It is important to check back regularly as schools review your materials and may start to ask for additional documents. There are times, like we talked about, where a school will use IDOC. So in this example, we have some schools that use IDOC, and there will be schools that do not use IDOC. So as you can see down below, there's a section about next steps for IDOC. Here's the section about submitting documents to your colleges and programs through their portals. I know this because it says submitting the documents listed below through IDOC does not meet the requirements for these schools. So this tells us that Union College, University of Pennsylvania, and Providence College all will require the same kind of documents, but they don't want them through IDOC, they want them through their school's portal. So this is scenario two. They use CSS profile, two or three, they use CSS profile, but they want it through their portals. So now you're like, well, how do I submit it through their portals? If that is the case, then we have two options that we need to explore. Step one is you need to check your email. Do you have any emails from the colleges that give you instructions on how to set up their financial aid portal? If yes, follow those instructions, set up the portal. If no, then you need to go to step two. Step two is to check the financial aid website. Is there a link or instructions on how to set up a financial aid portal on their website? If yes, follow their instructions. If no, call and ask their financial aid office and ask if they have a financial aid portal. If you get to step two and it's still no, you still need to figure out if they, how they want the document. So it's important for you to have communication with those colleges. I'm going to show you what one of those websites looks like. So here's a scenario. Let's say they didn't send you an email, but you're like, man, I really need to figure out how they want my documents. Right here on the financial aid website, Here's the homepage for the financial aid website. I scroll down, I'm skimming, and I see how to view financial aid award or required documents. So that is exactly what we're looking for. I'm clicking on that, and then it gives me step-by-step -step instructions. Again, every school does this differently. It's incredibly important for you to research each of your schools and follow the step-by-step -step instructions. You would follow all these instructions, get logged in, and see what additional documentation is needed. Finally, it's going to be really important for you to keep track of all of those portal websites or what you have already done, because if you're doing this for 10 or 12 schools, you're going to lose track of what you've done and what you still need to do. So if you go into your post-secondary org tool and you click on the college financial aid tracking tab, you will be able to see colleges applied to and you can start to fill things out. So this is a sample college. Yes, I submitted the FAFSA. Yes, I submitted the CSS profile. Do I need to submit documents for verification? I would be able to answer this based on either IDOC or portal. What is needed? Where do I send them? I do it through IDOC, I do it through portal. Let's say it's IDOC. 
have you sent those? No, not yet. And then if you did, yes, you'd write the date down so that you don't forget that you did that. You have a couple options if you wanna keep track of the website links or the usernames and passwords. One is you bookmark it, create a folder or some um, grouped tabs so you don't uh, have to always find that website again. Option two, you could use it down here. You could type in the website link, copy and paste it here, put your username, put your password, and then you're all good. <laughs>